What comes first? Website design for desktop or mobile? Desktop computers, tablets, and smartphones. How should we approach the design of a website that is going to be seen on all of these different platforms? Let's face it, there's no way around this necessary flexibility that your website design is going to have to have in order to reach the widest audience possible. Let's start at the beginning. Traditional websites designed solely for desktop computers are a dying breed. In 2011, the sales of smartphones surpassed the sales of desktop computers. Market research firm Comscore says there are more than 100 million smartphone users now in the U.S. To add to that, independent IT research firm Gartner forecasts that by the end of 2016, there will be 665 million tablets in use. Desktop computers are not immediately going away, although with the quick evolution of technology, don't quote me on that. But the growing number of tablet and smartphone users has led to the need for responsive web design. As designers and front-end developers, we need to <laughs> adjust our web design habits to match the demand for visual flexibility brought on by this invasion of small displays. What is responsive web design? It is the term given to the concept of designing and developing a website so that the layout changes depending on the device or display on which the website is being viewed. The current popular display resolution in pixels for desktops is 1280 by 1024. It's 768 by 1024 for tablets and 320 by 480 for smartphones. The trick is that tablets and smartphones can be viewed vertically or horizontally. Changing the display ratio to 1024 by 768 for tablets and 480 by 320 for smartphones. That is a lot of different display resolutions and this is just scratching the surface of all the different display resolutions available. When designing a multi-platform site you should think of the mobile device first. This is the case that Luke Robluski made in his book appropriately titled Mobile First. Content guides the mobile design process, but content when talking about mobile devices should not be separated from its context. Context asks when and where we go after the content we seek. There are some advantages to thinking of web design for mobile first. By thinking first of a device that is 80% smaller than your traditional desktop, you have to streamline the information you give to the user down to the most important components, which keeps us from the information overload that can plague web designs for desktops. Two popular techniques used in responsive web design include flexible grid systems that allow the design to adjust to a variety of display resolutions, and media queries to determine the type of device users are viewing when they arrive at your site, and then send the appropriate CSS to the device for display. To learn more about responsive web design, do a Google search on responsive web design, or check out the book Responsive Web Design by Jeremy Keith at abookapart.com. This presentation was put together using the following online sources. I know it's a lot of text, so I have also placed the URLs in the description area on YouTube in case you want to take a closer look. If you like this presentation, please take a moment to connect with me on Twitter. Thank you for your time.